All right, guys, this is the uh, first episode of my podcast. Um, it's labeled Intellectual Muscle Podcast and not just like a fitness podcast. And the reason for that is it like, yeah, my profession is in muscle and bodybuilding and, and stuff like that. But the whole podcast is really about me growing from being 20 years old to 30 years old and everything that I've really learned in my life uh, getting up here and all of the advice that I really give to other people mm-hmm. that are starting off from 18 19 20 uh and getting up to well hopefully you're going to be 30 one day <laughs> and beyond well, let's hope yeah let's hope so uh, but yeah basically my my uh, life lessons and everything that i've learned in life and how um how i can help out anyone else that might be struggling at some point so this is the first episode of the entire podcast <clears throat> of all the uh, podcasts that we're going to be having uh, having in the future hopefully uh, and instead of doing it like a solo podcast where I'm just talking to you guys and just introducing myself to you guys alone by myself, <clears throat> I have my roommate here with me, Liam. What's up? Um, so this guy obviously knows me way better than anyone else really does because he lives with me. So he's probably going to have a bunch of stories that you guys have never heard about or just things that most of these guys might not ever know that you could help probably get share with to them. Know, help get to know you better. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. From like a personal perspective mm-hmm. as opposed to like only a professional perspective and just the muscle that everyone's always you know associating me with um but yeah so this is the first episode and instead of just going like a solo uh, intro i'm going to be taking him through my history uh and my work profile experience and everything else and if he has any questions he's going to start asking me because i'm assuming that if you guys are listening and you might have questions as well they might be the same as what you have and if you have any other questions leave them down in the comments below email them dm them on instagram yeah any of those are any of those are good yeah thanks for bringing them up i gotcha. didn't actually think about that but yeah yeah perfect so uh ready to go yeah all right let's do this so this is a sway profile this was like one of the projects that i had that i had to make for school uh, mm-hmm. i just graduated this program at mohawk right yeah. so one of the projects that we had in the final semester of our course was making and like a like a an online resume kind of a thing okay. anyone can do it i think you can do it as well it's just a part of the microsoft office uh thing so this thing just works like a digital resume kind of a thing. Um, so this is one of the tests that I was doing for one of my own friends here. This guy's actually top. He came in third in all of Ontario in running or something. And I was coaching him and basically testing him on one of his uh, his tests and such. Um, so yeah, Kathan Sait, that's my name. Uh, I use K10 because... Um, how do you pronounce my name? <laughs> I don't know. I just know the easiest way for me to remember was when we first met and you gave me your phone number was k10 yeah it was always easier to remember that than trying to be like that looks like eaten yeah that's exactly what everybody says so yeah. <laughs> um having the k10 was always easier to understand. yeah that's basically how i go for it. if i meet someone new and they're gonna butcher my name anyways which happens just a K-10. lot i just go like yeah it's the alphabet k and the number 10 just go k10 um so that's uh that's where the k10 comes from and the new really comes from new new extreme which is like my internet handle my username that i've used for everything like any gaming. form or anything gaming work profile right at this anything that i've ever used really it's the exact same username uh so in short people would call me new so i just started using the word uh the yeah the acronym new really because nobody really wants to say new you extra no yeah and uh yeah and no most people can't even pronounce it right so <laughs> did i say it right no yeah you said it right yeah Nice. So yeah, Kathan or K10 or New State, uh, strength and conditioning and bodybuilding coach. Uh, strength and conditioning. Do you know what strength and conditioning really means? Um, so strength is. Well, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> um, conditioning is like being able to do something out for an extended period of time without dying within the first five seconds. So being yeah. able to, let's say, soccer or football, wherever you're from. Yeah. Um. You're able to play 45 minutes without dying after five minutes and needing a sub. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So strength is just plain brute strength and conditioning really comes from being able to handle something for like a prolonged period of time. But really the reason I mentioned strength and conditioning bodybuilding coaches because in my industry, in this industry, we have a certification called as the certified strength and conditioning specialist. And when you do that, you become a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. And that thing kind of is, um, it's like a world renowned thing. It, it's kind of like the PhD or master's level certificate that's ever done. So if anybody, anyone has that, then that's really the way that they just describe themselves because they don't have to go through, oh, I'm a, you know, BSC and Kin and this and that and everything. You just go strength and conditioning coach and they know like you kind of know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why I have that strength and conditioning and bodybuilding coach thing. <clears throat> this is, um, how old do you think I was in this picture? 
Um, so I'm gonna say about 20 because I know you, but if I'm gonna go with the stereotypical white dude, you look about 16 according to white dude standards. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna say about 20. I think I was. I think uh, this is this is probably one of my first ever clients. This is one of my first ever clients, and I think this was. Yeah, so this has to be like 2012, 2013. So that does mean I was 22, 23 maybe at that point in time. So yeah, pretty close. <clears throat> white boy 23. standard 16. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was one of the first clients that I ever trained and she was an absolute beast. Um, the weight that I think, I can, we can even calculate what, the, what weight she was using for her squats was like 20. The pink ones are 20, the greens are 10, these are 5, these are 2.5. So let's say twenty percent, thirty five, thirty seven point five into two seventy five and ten. So like eighty five ish kilos, and I think she weighed like anywhere from sixty five to seventy something kilos or something. So how much is that bar? The bar is only like eight or ten kilos. We the, that looks extremely tiny. No, it is because we well back. This is like a local gym, and all the gyms that I really I trained at, except for like the big box, big ones really, which there weren't a lot of to be honest. Uh, but most gyms they don't have like the standard Olympic Olympic barbells that you guys see right now. Like the ones that high schools have that, that are like forty fives. That's what it's yeah, that's that's why it's called like a standard Olympic barbell, because that's what you're supposed to have. <clears throat> Everyone's supposed to have that, but we never had any of those kinds of barbells anywhere really. Uh, especially not back then in like twenty eleven, twenty twelve. Only like the top most high high end places really had any of those. So yeah, that bar is only like eight or ten kilos <clears throat> as opposed to what it should be, which is like twenty point four kilos to be exactly like forty five pounds. But yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, she's squatting more than her weight. She was an absolute beast even back then. And uh, yeah, that was me training someone when I was like 21, 22, something of that sort. So the about me, <clears throat> I'm just going to go through it because you guys are listening and it's a podcast, obviously. Uh, it's so you guys are on audio. By the way, uh, I'm in this one. I have some video and, pro- and actually like every single podcast that I have, I'm going to have video as well. But I'm going to try and make everything as audio accessible for you guys so you know if you're driving or if you're in transit or in your car or in a bus or anything really anything you're cooking or anything of that sort anything you're doing you can always listen and you won't be missing out on anything so yeah so i'm gonna go through my about me that i really have on this page it's uh <clears throat> my name is Kaden Sadam also known as new short for this thing new extreme uh otherwise also Kaden. something that i just we just mentioned we just went through right now um when i was young i wasn't i wasn't quite uh, athletic and i wasn't even interested in sports back then but i was a very well well versed kid who had a passion for reading books and learning new things i'm kind of just reading off i even i don't remember what i've written to be honest <laughs> but yeah thanks to my amazing parents uh as time progressed during school i started feeling like i was missing out on sports and all the team camaraderie uh the respect both from oneself and others and all the other life lessons and benefits that were to be had by engaging in sports especially in teams sports and this was a school environment uh, over time, I became pretty good as a football player. I, I don't know, actually, I mentioned this to you. Well, football for us, right? Like, soccer, soccer for you yeah. guys. Yeah, but for football for us. Um, so I played that for about 8, 9, or 10 years. And I played that all the way to late uni. Um, and then in India, sports, well, kind of sports don't really go anywhere in most places. But yeah, India, 100%. There's no money in sports. There's no support in sports. And there most definitely was no money or support back in 20, 2011 or something back home. Mm-hmm. Now there is. Now there's a lot more. But uh, back then, there was nothing. So I, I dropped the um, the football. Like I, I was pretty good at it as well. And I dropped that. And I went for what every 18, 19-year-old wants at that time, which is like a six-pack. And that's how I got into this entire field and, and in this industry. Just uh, a hobby at that point in time just converted into a passion for me um but yeah <clears throat> so that was that I, i'm not gonna go through the rest of the entire intro you can actually just check out my sway these links are going to be in in the uh video description so you, you should be able to check these things out um multiple certifications and uh, and so forth later so this is my strength and conditioning this is the specialist the phd master's level certificate that mm-hmm. i spoke about um yeah it's i know it says 2017 but it's still valid right now mission profile statement so this is basically something that you have to write i don't really use this the way that i describe what i do right now is uh, i help people help themselves right so if you want to improve in anything yeah i've worked with like muscle and stuff mostly but if you really want to help with anything like even improving your schedule or um to be honest working on your self-confidence or anxiety or talking to women or anything really anything that anybody really comes up to me with like brandon i helped him out with any everything from training all the way to his like social life and personal life so I basically help you help yourself, but you have to do the work. I can just show you the things that work or the things that I've done to help improve my own life to some extent and or whatever I've seen and learned from other people that are way better than I am. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's the way that I do it. Uh, that's the way that I explain my mission, uh, mission profile statement for myself. But this is something that I had to write for school. So the, and this was actually legitimate when I started off. So the field of health and fitness, whether for gen pop or for competitive athletes is played with a lot of misinformation and misguidance. And I aim to make an improvement upon it in any and every way I can. I pursue a multifaceted position amongst like-minded and motivated people where I can put in my many years of personal as well as educational experience to good use. And we can better improve the lives of the people that we meet. You sound like a damn genius. I don't. <laughs> sounds pretty dope, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't. It sounds great and very like very thought out, but like, yeah. <laughs> so, so just saying that um, I help people help themselves. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of that, that. That definitely yeah makes a lot of sense. Super easy, also simple easier catch. than that. Yeah. So the, anyways, the, I'm just try, uh, trying to go through everything that we had to do for this thing. So the education aspect, okay, this is, uh, it says currently third semester, but obviously we've um, we finished we the course. Yeah, we graduated right now. Um, got like the 95 percentile, 95 plus percentile student in health, wellness, and fitness. So graduated with honors and such. I have my BTEC or my engineering degree back from um, where I did engineering back in Manipal in like South. I don't know if you even know where money fathers or cannot or okay absolutely not no idea okay so i finished my undergrad in computer sciences but uh, i moved into fitness um i well. just found out there was a country called oman really yeah i've actually lived there well their food looks so good oh, well sorry, yeah it's... My bad. <laughs> uh but yeah okay so this is the i got the cert the nsc a certified strength and conditioning specialist with the distinction this is the one that, that was talking about the mm -hmm. master's level one usa weightlifting level one certified sports performance coach mental health first aid training coach this is something that i did after i came here mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's no such thing as mental health first aid or anything really back home in india but when i came here everyone's always talking about you know so mental health and to be completely honest with you north america has over like overdone the mental health <laughs> situation yeah pretty much they make it sound like you get a little stressed down or you feel down ever yeah you're depressed and anxious yeah north america has overdone the mental health because like mo like most people get anxious when it comes yeah. to two big things yeah people get upset and feel down yeah but that's not being depressed and anxious or yeah like actual but exactly like, me personally i have depression and anxiety but those are clinically like i've had like six different doctors explain to me that i have them yeah but yeah. it definitely is important when it comes to North America because a lot of people claim to have it, so it definitely helps them. Even yeah. if they do or don't, <clears throat> still having that is definitely a good thing. Yeah. No. <clears throat> Plus, being in my field, like being in the service industry, if I'm if I'm training you, I'm not just training you. Like I'm not just like okay, put this weight on your back and just do this and get up and that's it. Like I'm al already talking to you. I'm al I'm always talking to you, right? We're always having a conversation. So that's the way that I've helped Brandon or really all, all these people that I'm meeting because like we have conversation. You're real human beings. You have real stresses and problems in life, and that's what you're trying to. And you've help definitely people helped with. me through a few different things. My, yeah. You helped Brandon with his three-year-long relationship breakup yeah you helped me through my grade 12 breakup which i was with the girl for my entire senior year of high school so i have everything from picking colleges prom graduation <laughs> so last i guess being nine, 18 at the time and yes yeah. 12 like sorry 10 months doesn't seem like a lot yeah but it's more the fact that like everything to like go farther in life was better <laughs> yeah. so I was hard, but you were all, all those big like, milestones pretty much. When I came here, when I moved to Hamilton, you definitely helped me. I, I was over her somewhat. Yeah. But you definitely helped me like clear my mind and figure out what to do and pay attention, take care of yourself. Yeah. And your family before anybody else. Yeah. You before everybody is how it definitely. Yeah. Because I was always other people. Family is family is different because obviously you want to take care of your family yeah but definitely you've helped me with all no i agree I, I think i think you're always 100 percent. like you're always number one and you can sacrifice being number one from time to time as long as somebody values, values the and respects the fact that you're, you're actually doing it they recognize the fact that you're actually doing it because when people don't recognize it you're just wasting your time and honestly you're hurting yourself more than anything yeah exactly so I'm glad I helped you out with that, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, ten months is a lot when you're eighteen, nineteen, and for for Brandon it was like three years. I mean, which he's is, eighteen, which is like one sixth of his life, like yeah. sixteen percent of his entire life. And to be honest, all of his entire adult life, because I I consider anyone really 
to be an adult that they can think for themselves only after like 15 well once you have puberty i'd consider it so like 13 14 years old or i on the person but yeah right around yeah. right around, actually i'd consider more high school so 15 yeah once that's, you hit high school exactly because so, then it's up to you if you don't want to go to class yeah nobody's forcing you up like you'll be marked absent but like, yeah nobody like it's not like public school where they do attendance like three times a day <laughs> And uh, school <clears throat> attendance in our schools used to be like completely different. Like we, if we didn't get to school for like at least, I don't even remember at this point, but seventy five percent was minimum. I think uh, if we didn't make it to school seventy five percent minimum, if not like eighty five ninety percent, then you'd be in fucking trouble. Now I'm talking about school back home. For me, attendance was before beginning of the day and at lunch in public school, and no matter how bad you did, you didn't do any work, you passed. They can't fail <laughs> in Canada. You can't fail public school. <laughs> really? You can't. I, I should have failed fucking grade like six. Yeah. I Man, mean, I got I got suspended so much as a child. <laughs> Man, I've missed. Okay, honestly, a real quick story. Yeah. My suspensions, <laughs> like when you get suspended, they do a write up and they keep in your permanent record just of the incident that happened. Criminal record, yeah. <laughs> public school criminal record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They pretty much have um, a piece of paper writing down everything. Yeah. And depending on how many people saw it and how many people were affected, mm -hmm. it's how many pages it was. <laughs> Most of them were like five pages long. Plus, I don't even know how many suspensions. All I know is I was able to see it one time because she pulled it out after I graduated. <laughs> well, it was one year. I never grade eight. I didn't get suspended once. Okay. They pulled it out and they're like. We're happy we don't have to add to this. Man, <laughs> my principal pulls it out and it's a thud. Like, this book, I swear, was like eight inches thick. From <laughs> kindergarten to grade eight. Oh my this God. Is eight inches thick of, like, paper. Okay. I, I swear, it was like 500 pages. I know you probably don't want to share this in public, but do you have, like, a criminal record already? Right I now? do not. Okay, don't so, have, yeah. so here, here's the thing. I, I don't mind sharing this because I have depression and anxiety with, as long as well as anger management, and yeah. those don't mix well. Yeah. Because yeah. when I'm anxious, yeah, no, that my makes sense. anger goes up because I, me personally, I'm a fight or flight kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I'll either throw hands yeah. or scream at you there's no in between <laughs> mm -hmm. don't have a criminal record but i do have some encounters with the police they've detained me i've never been charged i've never had to go to court but i have <laughs> been taken out of places in handcuffs in the back of cop cars with, i did not know that with many next time you do this we're gonna yeah. charge you about <laughs> no. six times i did not know that about okay. six times i've heard that so now it's like when I was younger, I was like, "That is hey, such so a bad example to give to everyone." I, I, that's I like... know. Don't like. <laughs> it's it's a bad example. This is me, and <clears throat> if I could go back and change, I would definitely change. But yeah. my problem is, for me personally, is I have a lot of brain injuries. Yeah. And the brain. Are you injury... like eleven concussions or? Okay, I have seven diagnosed. Seven diagnosed concussions. Half the time I don't get them diagnosed anymore because I'm too <laughs> lazy. Because I more or less after like seven concussions i can kind of tell when i have so, one. yeah so I, I, I can i can roughly tell okay maybe i should yeah my brain isn't functioning anymore you know <laughs> it doesn't like okay so um this is the last thing and then we'll continue this. yeah i had a brain scan in grade 11 mm -hmm. where they put a thing on my head mm -hmm. and they could read all my brain waves and figure out how they were functioning yeah my frontal lobe which is where i have my scar yeah which is where at four years old three four years old i was running at mcdonald's and to go run up a slide as every little child did in North America mm -hmm. want to run up the slide because it's always fun and then slide back down mm -hmm. this little girl came out I tripped over her feet and <laughs> smacked my head on a corner which was solid metal mm -hmm. so I severely messed up my forehead damn got this like every, my parents knew that like my mentality had changed my entire oh, brain wasn't functioning how it used to be before this yeah within like the first like couple days after after it i'd been like quote unquote a new person okay so then i got this brain test where they read all the brain waves yeah <clears throat> now when they put this thing on they can't tell you how old your brain is yeah the material can't just be like oh you're 16 mm -hmm. like, it can assume roughly you can compare the brain to the average age of an age, like the average brain of an whatever age it is mm -hmm. my brain for the most part I'm 19 now. At the time, I was like 17. It was saying it was about 15, 16. Mm -hmm. But with all those concussions, that's not bad. Yeah. No. Only being a year or two behind 
brain functioning wise is yeah. not bad with all these brain injuries. No, no. But my frontal lobe was a different story. My frontal lobe was stunned at four years old. Mm-hmm. I got this brain like it got messed up at four. It was only six. So after about thirteen years, yeah. it only developed about two years. And from what he said, I don't know if this is true. I've never actually looked at it. It's more your second guessing, your thinking, yeah. making sure like your anger management and all that, your anxiety, your depression, all that. I've about a f- right. I'd say right about now, I'd have about six and a half, seven year old brain. Yeah. So I learned that. But okay, I mean. So cool. We have, yeah. We have some cool tech that, like, <laughs> I would never expect somebody to do that until I found this place. It was like, yeah. Oh, this is cool. Wait, where was this done? This is done at a clinic in London. Okay. Uh, but, okay. Cool. Where, where, did we get, where did we get here? Uh, you oh, were, yeah. This, the mental health first aid training. Yeah. That's, that should be the cue. Yeah. yeah makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, the K11 thing, that was like the first uh, gym or, or academy that really existed back home, at least when I was there. Uh, besides like Gold's Gym and shit like that. This was the only academy that I, most people really trusted back then. So I got my uh, certified personal trainer with distinction, certified sports nutritionist distinction, master trainers course. Um, the, one of the biggest gyms uh, and gym chains and clubs really that originated in the in Europe uh, was Fitness First. I think it started off in the UK. I'm not 100 percent sure, but now it doesn't exist anywhere in Europe anymore. But it only exists in Asian and Southeast Asian countries at this point. Um, I don't know how that turned out, but yeah. So Fitness First was like the first place that I started working by myself. Like found mm-hmm. my own job and started working by myself. Got certified with them as well certified to work at home um this was the very first certification that i ever got the act the act ion but they basically changed names that's why i mentioned the act versus the now action yeah they just changed their own names <clears throat> but this was the very first one that that i used kind of like a practice certification test it was free yeah because it was free exactly yeah so um that besides that cpr and 80 but i think you know most CPR people yeah yeah to CPR do anything i think with the body lifeguard yeah anything personal trainer you need to exactly have CPR. yeah even even like ambulances or per, well, like police or like it. well yeah they need it, of course obviously. but like anything to do with yeah. working with people for the most part yeah you should have it uh career goals wise so this picture this is one of the guys that this is one of our classmates here and um most of these guys have like absolutely sick physiques already at 18 19 they just don't really know how to pose they don't really know how to how to train optimally pretty much so this guy and all the guys that I have on Instagram, a lot of the guys that I have on Instagram are actually some of my classmates that I started training with, made like a couple of adjustments here and there, either to their to their training or to their diet or to their supplementation routine or something of that sort. And those are the uh, the results that I really share on Instagram or something of that mm-hmm. sort. So yeah, this is, this is one of the guys that I was training with. Uh, were you asking something or? Okay. Um, I've worked in the industry. What is this? Oh, career goals. Um, so yeah, so currently I'm uh, like, I prefer training physique, like anyone that's interested in physique or bodybuilding or, you know, just anyone that wants to maximize their muscle and minimize the amount of fat that they're carrying on themselves. So in aesthetics really. So yeah. pretty much people who want to, um, so for example, me, like yeah. I'm skinny. I want to add muscle. If I yeah. wasn't moving, I'd definitely be going to you and yeah. going to the gym and yeah. working out. Oh, so if you guys don't actually muscle. know, he's going to be leaving in like a couple of days. Sunday. Um, but so I wanted to do like a case study on this guy. He has. I'm extremely broke. I yeah. have no money. Yeah. I eat absolutely nothing. I have no anything when it comes <laughs> to food. I moved to Hamilton weighing 180 pounds. Yeah. At six foot three, six foot two, six foot three, somewhere in that range. I'm six foot two. I'm about six three now, um, and I weigh about 143 pounds. Yeah. Well, we came up to like this uh, experiment that we wanted to do, which mm-hmm. was you can't change anything about your diet. You can't. But change. we want to see what yeah. you can do to help me. with Exactly. The, the whole case study was like, if someone has the worst fucking diet, they have no money, they have no job for to like support themselves in like any sort of a uh, uh, nutritional or supplementational kind of a way. But the only thing that they can do is really go to the gym and train, and like three days a week only. They it's not even like a big commitment. But what other changes that they, their, that their body can make? just with that baseline change that was going to be the case study honestly i was just so excited to try and go ahead with that yeah but it sucks that you're moving right now so, so. if any of you are broke skinny and <laughs> have no job and well like you have a job but like you just can't you don't eat well and you're yeah. really skinny or 
you're a little bit overweight and you yeah. want to try this message yeah hit me up on instagram or, or send me an email and we'll try and figure something out we'll try and work something out but um okay <clears throat> so those are the guys that i really like working with uh the stream i'm just trying to see if there's anything really that's interesting there oh yeah so besides that, i've done some public speaking uh i enjoy public speaking quite a bit actually that's something that i really like um fitness functional okay nutrition yeah my like i'm good at well nutrition's part of the bodybuilding game so i guess that's not really worth uh, mentioning but yeah public speaking writing i've been content writing content creating since like 2012 2013 so that's a part that i really like so i'm going back into like making my website and basically working on that a lot more <clears throat> i have a bunch of different uh contacts and social media links i have like an email address that's going to be there linked as well a blog that's now moved into like a website which is intellectual-muscle.com the minus sign is the hyphen right yeah yeah so intellectual-muscle.com uh, i have a facebook that's new 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 u extreme fitness is any w u x t r e m e fitness instagram is also the same thing new u extreme dot fitness and i have a linkedin but i never wanted to make one i just had to make one for school so i ended up making a linkedin but again all of these uh links and the resources will be in the description so you guys can click on and check on any of these uh this is the 14 year old that i was training this i don't know if you i don't know if you've seen his transformation video have i shown you his transformation okay that's on my youtube as well so that's that's actually on my youtube and my instagram okay so yeah anyone can check that out but this is the first day of coaching him so this is work experience <clears throat> uh and this is like going in reverse uh the last well besides the fact that i was working at crunch up until like jan 2019 for like the past year which is where i worked with these guys um <clears throat> prior to that I was a strength and conditioning coach at harvard in 2015 uh worked so there's something called as periodization which is like uh, this good that's going to be like a completely different podcast in itself but periodization is a way that only like someone that really understands training programming can make like a program where you just keep on making gains keep on making gains and you kind of never stop and you never plateau kind of a thing so that's periodization i had to make like periodization programs for <clears throat> 12 week progression programs for uh their men's hockey their women's lacrosse soccer uh men's lacrosse the, the, like every single one of these guys and our programs were actually practically used by their coaches so it wasn't like some example shit that you know no one ever did yeah. so we had to make sure that we <clears throat> we uh, set up stuff yeah that you could actually practically use <clears throat> uh harvard also had like 42 teams i think harvard has the maximum number of sports teams that ever exist in any college or uni or anything ever uh so they had like 42 teams with like 2400 different athletes and i don't even know how many coaches they had to support them but you had i'd be training and testing all of these guys with all kinds of different things not only just like basic benching and squat and like strength movements but also like agility movements cleans like power cleans vertical jumps you know so like nfl combine stuff? yeah nfl combine kind of stuff yeah exactly love that. yeah love that nfl combine nba guys they're they're testing their vertical jumps all the time so you basically athletes because it was strength and conditioning right it wasn't really just muscle at that point um did a lot of different things yeah well these aren't even like these are basic stuff like medicine ball workouts dynamic stretches warm-ups that's kind of basic stuff to be honest <clears throat> one of the uh, biggest things that i really liked was the fact that i was the first coach there amongst all of the recent coaches that had come in there <clears throat> where one of the main coaches had left and i was the first coach to be given responsibility of the entire team like Being you team. yeah so you you're the person you go ahead and take the entire your team entire training. like pretty much all the other coaches like were helping you for the most part um no so or for example they working on other things no so the, yeah the main coach because there was 42 different teams where there was yeah. like six to eight teams at a time right there so if we had one more team coming in and one of the coaches wasn't there and i was told to, okay you just take the entire team and take them oh so training. you did one entire team i did one entire team well the entire gym was full with like six or seven other different teams so yeah <clears throat> that was i was pretty proud of the uh, proud of that at that point uh just prior to that i was at mcmaster's that was the first time that i ever came to canada actually uh, mcmaster's was in 2015 just prior to that um <clears throat> strength coach and i i trained their men's and women's volleyball men's and women's basketball and the men's soccer team for some reason the women didn't have a soccer team i don't know why but, my high school no uh, women's soccer the women's soccer team no nobody wanted to <laughs> there were so many good female soccer players mm -hmm. just nobody wanted to play surprising <clears throat> but i um, wanted to do track and field same thing did the same thing that i did at harvard i did the exact same thing again but like conducting all of the nfl combine standard tests so 
FMS, SFM, SFMA. To be extremely honest, I've already forgotten what SFMA is. I remember the rest. Of it. I just know what the Vertec is. And oh, you know the that Vertec? One, that that's the jump. That's, that's the, the jump. jump and like there's yeah. all the little different yeah, sticks. Yeah, 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 yeah. You jump as high as you can and you just try and smack No, you're, you're not supposed one. to smack it that hard. You're no. supposed to get the highest one, but you're not supposed to like smash it. No, I know. But like <laughs> a lot of people end up like Yeah, they do it. Bit, yeah. But like. Because if you do smack it a bit, I have, it breaks, bro. I have seen, no, I'm saying, if you do smack it a little bit, there's a chance that one of them could snitch. <laughs> I have yeah. seen it. An extra one, so you can like, give yourself an extra, like, eighth of an inch break. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the word take. I did the rast, then there's lasers, opto jumps, tendo units, bands, change, agility, strength. Like, some of these things were things that I'd never trained with before, and I trained with them for the first time. They're abs- absolutely amazing things. Do you know what a tendo unit is? No. So I'll just quickly tell you what that is. Uh, it's basically like a machine that has like a string attached to it. So you take the string out and you attach that to like a barbell or something. Now you're exercising like normal, but because that string is attached to the barbell, so the speed of the barbell attaches to the speed of the string that's moving. And it can tell? It can tell how, how fast you're moving. So if you have a bad day, then you're not gonna... So here's what happens. When you when you have a bad day, you're really fatigued or, or tired or whatever it is, um, you won't be you, you won't find out about strength as much but you won't be as explosive so the speed thing really cor- corresponds to explosiveness like that's how it works out so you can tell okay i'm in like 100 percent shape right now or 100 percent condition or i'm having a bad day i'm only at like 60 or 70 percent of what i'm at so you can auto regulate your training using that thing at that point in time it's it's like one of the coolest things ever <clears throat> i don't know how much it, it um cost though but yeah it was super useful at that point um yeah that was that kind of like conducted all those tests it compiled a bunch of data for a bunch of different testings and such um did warm-ups mobility drills release movement prep neural activation sprint mechanics development training mechanics used video coaching softwares like the whole shebang macro meso and microcycles is just basically the same thing as periodization of programming <clears throat> but these are the different ways that it goes we actually learned about this over here and everyone was absolutely lost <laughs> but that was pretty fun um so what you lost no everyone else was completely lost they had no idea because most people just think training is like picking up a barbell and putting it down like i, I pick things up and i put them down <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so but that's not well, i mean it is but you know there's if you get into the science behind it there's so much fucking science like i've been i've been studying and training for 10 years and i'm nowhere close to like there's people that have phds and have been in this industry for fucking 60 years man so there's no end to it um but yeah so the well, the first time that these people found out that there's something called periodization and there's something like micro meso and microcycle they're like what the fuck but yeah um so the legacy project a legacy project is really a project that you do something and you leave it as your legacy right mm-hmm. so mine was I really like mine. There's something called this uh, force plates. Have you ever used them or heard of I them? I have. I was um really quick. Um, I was in um Western University getting a brain test done. Okay. Again with concussions <laughs> versus it was a free thing and I got, like I ended up getting like a gift card to the keg. It was like a hundred dollar gift card for filling out this thing because like they're sponsored by Western. Okay. It was um. I believe it's the same thing, but it's pretty much like it tells you like the force that goes back and forth when yeah. you're standing on top yes. of it. Yes. And they wanted to compare a brain that was highly damaged in concussions and very little to no concussions. Which one are you? That's a very dumb question. You know me. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, yeah. I had better balance. Okay. But like I pride myself on sports. Oh, is it? Okay. But um either way though like you would i would balance on it and try wait did and you like, have balance or no i did i oh, had better did. balance than this kid who had no concussions oh okay and i'm like my head's completely screwed <laughs> yeah and i can still because they want to find a correlation if higher yeah. concussions like more brain damage exactly, affected yeah. how you would move or like balance like you're walking you're running yeah. and we would do all these different tests and that was one like i'd stand on this thing and try and balance the best that i could try and keep it more stable, more yeah. more stable and flat and then like i'd have to adjust it as i was going and i would do it for like five minutes straight damn okay okay 
I think that's more or less what you're talking that's, about. That's what the Pasqua, yeah. So what we used it for really was um, people are lifting weights, and you kind of just wanted to tell if there was like uh, an imbalance and someone's pushing more from the right foot or as opposed to the left foot. And or when they're jumping up, are they really... So when you jump up, you end up with your toes, but are they really ending up, you know, the final forces with their mm-hmm. toes or not? That kind of stuff. So we had like multiple Pasco force plates. Now these fucking force plates, they just bought those things for like 10,000 bucks. I remember that. I still remember the price. It was like 10,000 bucks. And these fucking things did not come with a manual. Like there was no manual for these things. The quote unquote manual, I'm putting this in air quotes, but yeah, this fucking thing was like one page or two pages with no fucking instructions whatsoever. Nice. Yeah. So, so my part, so they were completely lost because they spent like 10 grand on getting these amazing pieces of technology that has no official support or documentation whatsoever. So I had to end up, um, somehow I connected that thing, those plates to like a software that works and recognizes everything, right? Uh, the, like it, it gets input and that's the software that works on the input and then gives you the output. Yeah. So the software that had that input somehow worked with that, those plates. And I used the manual of the software to make like a manual on how to use those damn force plates. So that they were super happy when I ended up with that thing. But yeah, that took a while and that was a, that was a, pretty fucking complex but that was my legacy project at that point in time uh that was mcmaster that was 2015 just prior to that um i mean i don't think do you know what healthcart.com is by any chance no okay so it's like the biggest online reseller retailer of uh, all supplements and medicines and everything back home in india right especially sports supplements and such um <clears throat> so for these guys they came up with like a brand new company that, that at that point that was a brand new company called muscle blaze that was like their own thing uh and they needed like someone to create content and put it out there like why is protein important why is creating important should i have a protein post-workout or not all those kinds of things and like doing road shows and such so i used to yeah sorry were you saying something i was just gonna after you're done i do have a question but Okay, yeah. So basically, I wrote articles and I, and I counsel people on training, nutrition, rest and recovery, supplementation, injury prevention, rehab, and all their social medias and their, their road shows and such. But yeah, go ahead. Okay, so you said pre-workout, yay or nay? Is mm-hmm. it a yay or nay kind of thing? Should you do pre-workout or, after, or post-workout? Like, So that depends. Pre-workout is a completely different thing. <clears throat> post-workout, there's really no such thing as a post-workout. It's just people have protein post-workout. That's con- so protein is considered post workout because like my my sport like my ho- sorry soccer coach back yeah. in I think I was like thirteen or something he'd yeah. always he'd always buy like lots of, like his his uh, son was on the team so yeah. he'd always buy like a bunch like a liter of chocolate milk for each player on yeah the team. yeah yeah and that was always what we were told like he was like hey, that's no, actually not bad at all chocolate milk well, is not bad at all white milk either way Wh- yeah whatever you prefer yeah. but just always had milk and but like in your mind yeah which one should you which one should you do if you're going to do either if you're going to do only one if you can only do one pre-workout or post-workout post-workout 100 percent. and what is a pre-workout so pre-workout is a completely different thing pre-workout is something that it's not protein it's um uh it's just something that people use to like get buzzed up and and to go so like caffeine that's and so drinking like six cups of coffee yeah and something just that's, going, what, that's a pre-workout or like three or like two monsters and yeah just exactly all of those chest. things exactly okay. all of those things are pre-workout. i didn't know what pre-workout was, yeah so that's what you. a pre-workout is yeah and post-workout that's what i'm saying post-workout isn't a thing it's just a post-workout is just a time frame so as soon as you finish your workout that's the post-workout time where you just end up, end up having protein so there's no post-workout drink per se so it's like, just a time for me yeah. i'd always have a chocolate milk and yeah I, well after practice it was a small chocolate milk after because like it was just practice like mm-hmm. we didn't go that hard and then after a game it was um a chocolate milk depending on what my game was if it was an afternoon game i'd always we'd go home and have steak at dinner for dinner yeah so that makes protein. sense yeah yeah that's good um yeah so that's pre work and post-workout that's me working uh in content writing and stuff um Prior to that was with Fitness First. That was the first job that I found for myself. I already mentioned Fitness First mm-hmm. uh, place. Um, I joined as a senior nutritionist. I conducted classes and trained a bunch of other students uh, to successfully practice as nutritionists. So when I was a nutritionist myself, and this was like when I was like 22, 23 or something, I was teaching other people that wanted to become nutritionists and was just coaching them for classes and they had to give an exam and become one themselves. So what is a nutrition? I'm kind of... Is from what I'm assuming it is, is it's more just people who help you with nutrition. Mm-hmm. Is that the gist of it? Yeah, that's the gist of it. So here's the thing: there's a such there's such a thing as nutritionists, there's such a thing as dietitians, 
and well yeah and then dietitians become like registered dietitians like rds and blah 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 they all do the same thing I'll they all you. have to yeah they all have to know about food they all have to know about how different things work in the body and how and what you should be eating to you know get the results that you want now here's the thing though dietitians have a completely different schooling and they have really nothing whatsoever to do with strength and muscle and this and that which is the worst thing ever because that's really what controls your health so what controls your health really isn't nutrition it's the training stimulus that you give and then you supply fuel nutrition is just the fuel mm -hmm. even if you have bad fuel you'll be badly fueled but this is the stimulus that's going to keep you going kind of a thing so so anyone that doesn't even understand like dietitians actually don't understand training and exercise they only try and solve everything through food and unfortunately the fuel can't really do anything if it's not going to be used as much or as well or something so for me i don't eat well yeah but i play a lot of sports so i am in good shape in a sense of am i right when i don't eat the best but i definitely stimulate my body through exercise so you're healthier than you would otherwise be which would be even more unhealthy so if i if i didn't eat well and yeah. i didn't do anything yeah then i'd be extremely be, unhealthy then be fucked yeah be well, probably weigh like 100 pounds yeah, yeah imagine yeah, a yeah. six foot 300 pound dude i'd be just yeah. some skinny man <laughs> i'd be a twig more than i already am yeah but yeah so that's it and nutritionists here's another thing about nutritionists uh nutritionists can't really depending on the place that you're in and and blah 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 the laws nutritionists really can't sell diets they can only offer like what i do i never sell anyone a diet i just offer consultation and guidance and counseling do you want my advice so people pay me for my advice not really for a diet that i'm selling them right because like officially or legally you can't really sell a diet a registered dietitian can sell a diet could you like persuade them to a one to do a specific not specific but like a few different options um, could you say i'd recommend yeah that's something this that one do. this one or yes. this one no, yeah exactly. I'd, I'd recommend i'd be like i'd highly recommend doing this yes but like, exactly. i'd recommend you trying this this exactly or this. it's basically just wording because like you can't sell that knowledge and well i mean you're still selling that same knowledge to be honest but you can't really sell it as a diet you can't just say this is the diet and i'm selling it to you it's more like okay this is the information that you that's important to you take I it or leave it kind of a thing this or yeah this i or recommend this. it something on that so that's exactly what it is it's just semantics and um the reason why this this is fucking bullshit by the way it just the reason why it exists is because dietitians have to study for like four years and if you're studying for four years then you're fucking paying money for four years so the government gets and how long money. do you study to be a nutritionist you can do like a beacon certification if you really a want weekend yeah that you can we can become a personal trainer in a beacon you can even become a personal trainer that can coach anyone in a weekend obviously i'm not gonna be as good no as yeah as obviously you, you're not but yeah but i'm just saying you can become a weekend nutritionist or you can take like a year long two year long online sort like some of the best ones right now are like a year long or something or two years long online and then you just you just get the nutrition certification and they're way better than most dietitians that come out of school uh -huh. so uh, nutritionists are actually just way better than dietitians dietitians because they have no idea with anything to do with actual health because yeah. That's all they work on. The, they work on the food to help yeah. the body, but they yeah. don't worry about like how the food reacts to the yeah. body. And if you do this, food helps with this part of the body, right? Yeah, yeah. They don't know that stuff. They just know food. Not yeah. Not only that, dietitians have to work with everything from like a medical perspective. So it's only like people that are sick or people are that are diabetic or okay, high blood so pressure. Okay, so dietitians blah, blah, blah. are more for people who like are like the um, pharmacist of food. Uh, no the dietitians are not pharmacists are really elevated they're really educated and stuff so no they're not dietitians are dumb. dietitians should be under nutritionist yeah they are under nutritionist they're just they're, they're just, just a four-year degree that's why they that's why people become make themselves look yeah yeah it's a four-year degree you have to pay money for it that's the whole reason why it even exists it's, it's pretty much a scam you can get way better results from a person that's a nutritionist that, that knows what they're talking about as opposed to a dietitian that just paid four years to be in school to get like a stamp that's one of the things um and even so here's the other thing so if you're a diabetic or or you have insulin issues or hypertension issues or anything really let's say you're sick right diet alone is not going to do jack shit it really is not going to do fucking jack shit you, you have to go and train to get everything working right again and then you supplement with the fuel right so again a dietitian will actually be useless because like the way that they have to work is actually to work something like exercise something get the body working again and then use some fuel 
So that's when that addition could possibly be useful. But again, they end up not being use useful at all, even with the people that they're supposed to be most useful with. Want to get that or not? I got that. Yeah. Oh, that was too long of a rant, off topic rant, but yeah. Um, trained and originally guided personal clients who showed fantastic results with improvements. Like, that was my first ever place that I ever worked. Um, this is one of the guys that I work with right now. He ended up winning. He ended up winning two different shows. Well, no, he ended up winning his local show. The first one. This was the one before. This was the one that I was training him for right now. And then he ended up going and placing in the top five in the uh, Toronto Pro Show. Skills and abilities wise, sports and human psychology that I think is so so fucking useful especially if you're in uh in like a service-based industry because mm -hmm. that's all psychology when you're talking to someone else you have to kind of get into their brains and figure out what they're thinking what they're going to do or like are you going to eat the stuff that i'm actually asking you to eat or you have to trick them into doing things so yeah sorts and human psychology i think is super important public speaking i love it and it's just uh, it is a big part because at the end of the day you have to talk to a lot of people and tell them about the same knowledge and education and stuff so public speaking Article and content writing, editing, formatting, content creator, video editor, mental health first aider. These are just the things that I put up through the school right now. Um, that's my certification again. Awards and honors. So the peak performing student at Mohawk College, you get on the dean's list, right? That's, yeah. That, yeah. So the dean list thing. Uh, I got my CSCS, the, the PhD certification with distinction, and I was the fifth only and the youngest person that, that got it way back when I got it. It was like 2014 or so, I think. Uh, I topped every single one of my nutrition, personal training, and uh, personal training certifications across all the places that I did them in. Uh, this is what really gets me hired. Did I did I go over this before or not? Because this is the stuff that really always gets me hired. Um, I, I you, topped. You've told me, but you haven't told. Yeah. Okay. I might not have told anyone. You haven't said me. it yet. Yeah. So it's the um, I've topped. I topped the nutrition session sale, or basically the nutrition sales across the entire country within the first month of getting hired at the first place that I ever got hired in my first ever job. So in India, you. In were... India. Okay. Yeah, and at that point in time, I was competing with this guy who was a celebrity trainer. So that's someone that was already working for like at least three years or so, who had his name in the market and in the industry for absolutely forever, and and. This person actually lived in Mumbai or Bollywood, which is like Hollywood, right? So everyone there wants to look good and is going to pay money for stuff. And I was in a completely different state where it's not that popular or something. And I still managed to break the, like top him out and break the nutrition sales at, in that month. So that's, that's nobody really, when, I, when I'm, if I'm ever putting my job application in anywhere, People are always just looking at that one statement. They really don't give a because shit about the PhD. Because most people don't care about yeah. the outcome of your work. They exactly. Care. Companies don't care about the mm -hmm. outcome. They care about your sales. Mm -hmm. You could be a terrible personal trainer exactly. as long as you're bringing in sales. Exactly. Like everything which is, is a business, stupid. which is money. So. Which is stupid because companies care more about the yeah. money than they do about the actual well-being of people. Yeah, well um so yeah that was that the youngest lecturer for nutritional counseling uh, course in fitness first the same thing like i mentioned when i was 22 23 i was teaching the other guys that were trying to become nutritionists themselves um qualified to be the first international student uh with uh with mcmaster yeah i was the first international student to come in there was no other international intern prior to that in in strength and conditioning so it was the first person to do that and also the first only and perhaps the only indian coach that's ever been at, at harvard at least as far as i know because they've never really <laughs> told me about that after. Um, and even before that, I played like football and soccer for like the longest amount of time. I played in like school. I played in club. I, CBSC zonals is basically like school zonals and stuff. We used to play different states and such. So I used to play that back in school. So like for me, um, back in like my public, like my uh, high school, we'd go across all the different um, schools that were in our district mm -hmm. in London. And then we go to a few other uh, smaller, like, communities out just outside of London. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Like, all the different zones. Yeah, pretty play. much. We play different zones. Of the yeah, exactly. Pretty much the exact same thing. And then collegiate, which is... Just college. College. Though. Yeah. Didn't I didn't decide to play in college. Um, professional development. <clears throat> I attended the Swiss event. That's re the Swiss is really the place where I felt the most... The most advanced, the best of the best really ended up being at Swiss, in my opinion. That's Those are the pictures that I always keep putting up yeah. on Instagram and such. That's for the Swiss 2018 event. Uh, keep up with the muscle strength and conditioning research on a monthly basis. Uh, that's actually up on the wall right there. If you look on the third last one right there, the mass update yeah. weekly thing. Mass update and the Swiss summary, those are both of those things. So I mm -hmm. keep up with that thing on like a monthly basis. 
Uh, mental first, uh, mental health first aider. Oh, mental health first aider. That's again one of the things that I did from this school, and a personal trainer from like four or five different organizations, and sports nutritionist, and a master trainer. Uh, field placements. I helped some of these guys out with in. Um, no, oh, almost at the end now. Okay, so the field placement. I ended up uh, working with guys that were from the RCMP and like the Royal Canadian Mountain, the Royal Canadian Mountain Police, and others that were. What were the other ones? Even I completely forgot what they were. Oh yeah, the so prep. just help them for tests for the prep test and the pace. So these are what all your police officers and security officers and special forces and such. The, those are the tests that they have to make sure to pass through, otherwise they won't be yeah. hired. So those are the tests that I trained them for. Um, that was then. This the fit to pitch event was just a random event for of networking back in school. Gallery just I think this thing just picks up or like your yes, some of my YouTube videos, but not all YouTube of them. Videos. My yeah, my older YouTube videos and such. The, both of these, this is the first one that's already there, um, up on as a picture up top. But these are my, two of my oldest clients ever that they're in this gallery and they're on my YouTube channel as well. Finally, some of the pictures that I ended up here. I know people that are listening to the podcast won't be able to listen to this, but yeah, just uh, this is a Hamilton Food Literacy Month project that we basically just learn how to make like healthy shakes and such. Right outside my old math classroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. That's the one. Uh, this guy is called this guy is Stan Efferding. He's the world's strongest bodybuilder. I met him at the Swiss event, and his diet is the one that I've been using with like a bunch of some of the guys that are on my Instagram page, the befores and afters. They're using his diet, so and he's just one of the most popular people in this. Industry. And his diet seems pretty cool. It's it is. The, yeah. Uh, what is it? You stick with a few different foods, yeah. and you just constantly what you up increase the you increase the quantity, but not uh, you increase the quantity, but you don't change the variety. That's it. Yeah. So it's so the meats only like uh, bison burgers and steaks. The carbs are only rice and orange juice and like that's that's pretty much like your entire thing. But you just go up and, and you down in calories. Eat that's that during it. the day. You that's only all you yeah. Eat. That's all you eat pretty much throughout the entire day. The reason for that is to figure out what your gut can handle and what it cannot handle, kind of a thing. So can your body digest food or not? So that's the way that his diet works. Is like a get vertical diet. Um, Chris Duffin, one of the biggest uh, guys that is he's a really big self-made uh, man uh, in this industry as well plus he bought up he made this invention kind of i guess he bought this invention to the best which is like an old school uh, indian tool that we used to use back in our mm -hmm. old school gyms so it's, it's called the shoulder rock it's just used for shoulder stability and such if you just check out chris duffin and shoulder rock then you'll find exactly what i'm talking about but that's something that came from india i actually discussed that with him back there um so that's him bill kazmaier is one of the strongest uh, men ever that has ever existed uh, but he's like obviously this is like 20 years post his his competing years and such eddie cone uh holder of 71 plus different powerlifting records <clears throat> this guy is i love talking to this guy <clears throat> this guy's william levelin um or bill and he's the guy that made the anabolic bible like everything anything and everything to do with anabolic steroids or other things that you may not even know what they are SARMs and peptides and such yeah i saw what steroids are yeah steroids yeah that's what everybody seems to understand but yeah so he's the guy that made the bible for the entire thing and i know he, it looks like he hasn't used them but believe me he's used them and he's used them pretty well and he made the book that everybody consults at this point um brian carroll this guy was an, a, a strong man this guy is a dr Stuart mcgill he's like god tier he's like the ultimate the highest level that anyone can reach about knowledge and information about the back. As far as I, I know. The I don't spine. know if there's... Hmm? The spine? About the spine. Yeah. yeah. The, but the back is... Because the back and the spine is like the number one thing that everybody's always complaining about. That's the first thing to go in anyone really. Degenerative disease, or you, this, that. Well, or... me, my, me personally. My knee's gone. Oh, is it? Well, I have like half an ACL in here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like split. But yeah, so this this is the guy that knows anything and everything to do with the spine. So anyone that's reading anything or has any issues with their back should really just check out his work. Um, let's get that. And Eric Serrano. That guy is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so this is the guy that... Um, this guy is John Meadows' doc. I'll show you who John Meadows is. This guy is John Meadows. This guy is Dr. Scott Stevenson. This is the guy that I feel is in the top three to five coaches on the entire planet. He's an IFBB pro himself, which is like the biggest card. Like the, the card that you get when you become a pro. Um, and he makes all the other pros, but he's also like one of the most genuine dudes ever. Now this guy is that guy's doctor. So he helps him out with staying in health and have all of his blood markers and blah, 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 everything in check kind of a thing. 
Um, those are those guys. Ben Pakulski is a, is your Canadian Mr. Olympia competitor. I don't. He, I think he came in like top five or something. I think which is still insane. He's still pretty good. I think he came. Well, he definitely wasn't top ten. I don't know if he was top five or not, but definitely wasn't top ten. He's also a self made. Uh, he's really successful right now, and he's self made, and he's pretty fucking smart. So yeah, I like this guy as well. Um, this guy is um, fuck. I forgot his name. Ray Collins. Ray Collins is um, he's the lawyer. For anything and everything to do with only with steroids so like if you get legal problems with them? yeah so any anyone that really gets into any kind of legal problems with with steroids or SARMs or anything really of that sort like performance enhancement this is the guy that everybody calls can I make my joke now yeah sure okay so if you ever have any problems with um, steroids or you can use my advice for any other sort of um, paraphernalia we'll say <laughs> She got an extra pair of shoes that you don't use that often, but they're not like complete beaters. Remove the sole, mm -hmm. slide them in, mm -hmm. toss your sole back over, mm -hmm. you're set. But they have to be like deep. No. No. How are they gonna? What's a cop gonna do? They pull. How do you put your steroids in? Like, you know what a steroid comes in? It's like vials and such. Yeah, you put it at the toe. Oh. Hmm. Because if you look into a shoe, what do you see? You see oh. the heel. You're set. Okay, okay, okay. Is that I what you thought I was going to do uh, when I, I went honestly... back? You thought I was just going to put it, like, all the way across? No, you just put it in the toe. Because when somebody... Even if you pull the shoe open, you can't see the toe. Oh, really? And if there's a little bump, what's any... It's dark. Nobody's going to see it. They're going to uh, look in your shoe. They're but... Nobody's going to look inside your shoe. Okay, yeah. I didn't think that through, bro. I, I haven't trafficked drugs yet, so... I don't know. I'm <laughs> about to. Helpful, <laughs> helpful tip, though, yeah. Um, I'm yeah, kidding. That's, that's a joke. Don't do that. Okay, this guy is Jim Mendler. I gotta, I gotta mention Jim Mendler, who this guy is. So this is the guy that made this program called this <clears throat> the Mendler 531. Uh, a mini story about Jim Mendler. <clears throat> there was this guy, th there's this kid who's like my younger brother, right? I considered him like my younger brother back home. Um, and I used to, I, I, I told, I mentioned that I played football and soccer for like yeah. nine, ten years. So I used to take this kid with me to play soccer as well. And he was, he was like ten years, he still is like ten years younger than me. So he used to have, younger. huh? He was ten years. Yeah, younger. yeah, he's ten years, tenish years younger than me. So he used to play with me. <clears throat> and so he'd get destroyed. I he'd get destroyed game. exactly, because <clears throat> he used to play with people that were ten years older than him. But the, but what happens at that point is you either survive or you die, right? So <clears throat> what ended up happening with him is he learned how to play against big strong guys at that point in time and use skill as opposed to like brute strength. strength. Exactly yeah. because he couldn't match up with us, so he became really good at that. Uh, at the end, this guy ended up getting to go to Manchester City. You know what Manchester, Manchester City United and, and Man Yeah. So Manchester City and Chelsea. He ended up going for trials in the UK at that point. And when he went there, <clears throat> prior to going there, I told this guy, bro, you're going to be competing against white dudes and black dudes. And these guys are going to fucking destroy you, like physically. So let me let me train you for strength and let me actually make you like bigger and stronger so that nobody can push you off the ball. You can jump up higher, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And he did not heed any of the advice that I gave him even though this was even though he was like my younger brother and he I knew him for fucking forever he didn't heed any of the advice that I gave him he ended up going to the UK and the coach that he ended up getting there at Manchester City or wherever the fuck that was gave him the most basic cookie cutter do you know what cookie cutter means um I know what cookie cutter house so are they're all identical identical exactly so the, he gave him like a fucking cookie cutter program that's exactly a copy paste for every single one and the worst part is the program wasn't even that good. So he gave him like a cookie cutter program that wasn't even meant for him. That wasn't even as good. And the second program that he, that he gave him was like the Wendler 531 program, which is literally just ripped off from a book and given it to him. So um, that's, I, I mentioned that program to this guy and he was like, I should have probably received like loyalties or something from him. But. Uh, can I say <clears throat> a quick thing? Yeah, sure. So you were saying about how he was like really small and was playing against people who would just knock him off the ball. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways to overcome those. For me personally, I'm a skinny Carry your knife with you? What? Carry your knife with you? No, I'm talking about on the sports field. Yeah, still carry your knife with you? <laughs> no. Okay. <clears throat> Not like that. I okay. don't do that kind of stuff. Okay. It's different in hockey. You got them on your skates. Oh, yeah. You got them on your feet and you can just yeah. go slice them. Like in, football, in football, you have... Um, you have cleats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, studs. Studs, exactly. Well, they're not sharp, though. Yeah. They're, they're just really, really firm. Yeah. Anyways, I've learned to overcome the fact of I'm a skinny dude. Mm -hmm. I'm able to use my skill as well as I might be small, but I know how to lower my body 
mm. and just be able to take hits. So I played American football, mm -hmm. and I'd be going up against people who are my same height, mm -hmm. but they'd have an extra like 50 to 75 pounds on me. So then I was be 100 now. Well, 150 now. <laughs> yeah. So I was able to teach myself after yeah. years of playing soccer, hockey, and football to lower my body weight yeah. and just. I could then take hits and make lower, hits. Lower your body weight. weight or lower your body sorry, like center of gravity? Thing not right? my body weight, sorry. I meant um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. center of gravity, center of and gravity, I was yeah. able to hit these kids. Yeah. They'd hit me, fall, or I'd hit them. Yeah. And, well, it's kind of my job if I'm going to hit them to fall yeah, too because yeah. I want to make sure they're on the ground. Yeah. But I was able to do that. Yeah. No, but you're right. Obviously, see, so that part is skill. That part is science, right? But obviously, if, if you I were had, bigger if and I had stronger, your techniques, even, yeah. of your body, and like being able to learn and how do to the get, same thing that you were doing, and do that, I would have. You would have been unbeatable at been, that point. I would have been a god. Exactly. That's that's kind of the whole point. That's where strength and conditioning comes in. It just strength and conditioning just makes you better than what you already are. You already have to be a good football player or soccer player or basketball player because strength and conditioning is not going to teach you how to play basketball, football, no, or soccer. It's just going to help you it, yeah. with your body and becoming becoming better it's if gonna you're help. already good. Your skills need to be at a prime experience yeah. Yeah. to do anything, but this will help you go farther. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> one of the ex Miss Olympias and one of the chicks here at Swiss. Perfect. That was the entire intro to uh, who K10 or K10 or New is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was the the first episode. I think I'm actually that was a good idea of having you on because if I just gone through that entire thing by myself, I'd have put it myself. Probably would have been quicker though. It probably would have been quicker, maybe. But yeah, you I wouldn't know. have all these other questions that a few people might ask. No, but yeah, but exactly. But I wanted you to ask these questions because they're probably gonna have the same questions as well. Now I have another question. Sure. If somebody wants to get in contact with you, which is easiest? <clears throat> Um, the email would be easiest. Uh, number one would be emailed because then you can actually give me like a detailed question at that point. Uh, if not that, and Instagram. Stuff. Sorry. And you can link photos. And I can link stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can send photos and like and link anything on that thing. It's much just much easier to write an email out as mm -hmm. opposed to like a DM. But yeah, you can also hit me up through a DM or don't do a Facebook Messenger. A lot of people try and do that, but I mean, if you if you know me from back home and you have me on Facebook, that's a different game altogether. But. Yeah, uh, emails and DMs are the best ways to probably get to me. Um, and then... I also reply to comments that are on YouTube and on my Instagram and everything, so if you have like a short comment or something of that sort, yeah, 100%. Um, if somebody wants to start training with you, mm -hmm. are you willing to start training people? Yeah, so I do have online training clients. In fact, some of, my, uh, some of the recent pictures that I have uh, are of my online training clients. <clears throat> um, so I can just give like a number breakdown or something that generally I go for like 60 purely for training and 60 purely for nutrition per week. But if most of the, I like just, I prefer to, and most people also prefer to get both together cause then I can control both of them. So I go for like a hundred a week or at that point. Uh, but I also prefer to work with someone for a minimum of 12 weeks or three months. Cause like you, you can't work less than that and notice changes in your body, especially if you're natural. So uh, I work for 12 weeks, and if someone's going for like a like a, a full 12 week commitment in the first time go, then I make it even easier and even better for them. Uh, besides that, if someone just wants to have like a phone consultation or something, that's like a, that's a hundred bucks for like an hour. But then make sure you prepare every single question that you want to have answered, have everything written down, and anything that we discuss during that thing. And if you want to go for like a program or something else, there's other charges for programming after that. But yeah, those are some of the gist uh, of the ways that I work with different people at this point. Yeah. Um, I have one last question. Sure. Um, one second. Um, you just like trim this because I'm thinking. I no, that's okay. That's fine. Um, do you, would you do... If somebody doesn't live in Hamilton, mm -hmm. they live in, say, Alberta, mm -hmm. or they live in the U.S., mm -hmm. and they want your help becoming bigger, yeah. how much would that cost you? And because you wouldn't be able to see them in person. Yeah. So. No, so what I actually just mentioned was my online training client charges. Okay. So what if it's in person, though? Oh, in person, it's like, well, it depends on who I'm working with and stuff of that sort. But, I mean, I guess if I have to give a number or something, then it's going to be, again, 60 a session for, like, two sessions a week 
if you're doing two sessions. And if you're doing a third session as well, then it's like 150. So it's so, like 60, 60, 60. Instead of 180, it'll become 150. But you make sure then then you don't have to so think 60 about... 60 bucks a session. 60 bucks a single session. And for two, that, two sessions and so this session, does that also help with your nutrition? Yeah, at that point, yeah, if you're working with me, then I'm just going to keep telling you. Every, we're, so you have in, like a full in person, hour. it's pretty much half of the online. It's so what you're paying online is what you're paying for a single session in, in person, you're paying for the whole week. So okay. that's the difference. Okay. But obviously, when I'm working with someone inside, uh, like in person, I'm looking at every single thing that they're doing. I can work on their technique. I can I can look and tell, okay, bro, you're gassed. You can't do this right now. Just do this, this, this. Or okay, you're super, you're like you're super strong. This is your day. Just crush it. So I can do all of those things uh, when I'm working with someone in person. So and, and just make sure that no one's gonna get injured. Yeah. But if you're doing something online, then I need pictures and videos of you from different angles, and I have to go through the whole thing. And that's why we have like a double weekly consultation kind of a thing. But yeah, if anyone's interested in any of those things, just hit me up on my email. I'll give you the details about everything that you require. But, um, yeah. And then if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, DM, yeah. email, comment section below. Perfect. I think you hit every single thing. Got you. Perfect. So that was it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the first podcast, and I shall see you guys next time. Drugs, not hugs. I'm kidding. It's hugs, not drugs. Fuck, I messed that up. Okay. <laughs> I just said drugs, not hugs. <laughs>